The St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party launched its digital manifesto on the 28th of July as part of its quest to regain the seat of the federal government in the 5th August general elections. Led by Dr. Terence Drew, the candidate of constituency number 8, the SKNLP is focusing on a post-COVID-19 economic agenda, inclusive of the strengthening of economic sectors and the introduction of new programs. Tonight I want to announce that as part of this COVID reset, your caring Labour Party, once elected and when elected, will extend the Social Security income support of $1,500 per month for an additional six months for all who have lost. Full cast of SKNLP candidates were officially introduced even though the SKNLP had presented its slate well before any party on St. Kitts. Glenn Bart reporting for SKN Newsline. The People's Action Movement candidate for constituency number six, Troy Flanders, announced plans for the constituency if elected. During his address at a public meeting on Wednesday night, Mr. Flanders said communities like Deer Bay, Sadlers and Newton Ground are in urgent need for community centers. Now is it time number six. As your representative, I will be calling on the Minister of Sports. Listen to this one, you know. To fence and light the playing facilities in Saddlers, Parsons, and Newton Ground. And we just don't want them fence, you know. We want them nice, nice, nice. We want to see bleachers and things up there. Eh? Not just fence. And while you're at it, while we're fixing them up, we want to put a section there for the younger ones. To play. Yes. Some people call it family park. Mr. Minister of Community Affairs. My constituency is in bad need of community centers. In Deer Bay. In Sadlers. And also in Newton Brown. Mr. Flanders also spoke to plans for agriculture. And to improve roads in the constituency. We also... We'll be looking forward for our village roads to be built out and resurface. <laughs> As the minister, that's true, I know, you know, of agriculture. Constituency number six and number seven will be a part of our breadbasket. So we will be at the forefront of our nation plan for food safety and security. Constituency number six has been a stronghold for the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party for decades. But the People's Action Movement is looking to make inroads come August 5th. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. August 5th is election day and SK Newsline, your number one news source in St. Kitts and Nevis, has all the news, action and information on Election Watch, a webpage dedicated totally to all things election. Log on to www.sknewsline.com, click on Election Watch and stay tuned to all things elections, including live public meetings from the various political parties. All this leading up to the August 5th poll. Election Watch on SKN Newsline, your trusted news source for election 2022. When you're looking to sell, buy, rent, or manage a property, your answer has to be Diamond Real Estate and Management St. Kitts. Dreams. They provide oversight of real estate and physical property in St. Kitts and Nevis, perform regular maintenance, utility payments, and safety checks to ensure your property is well kept. Dreams manages and optimizes your rental listing, recruits tenants, and much more. Looking to sell that parcel of land or property, or dreaming of owning your own? Trust Dreams under the leadership and experience of its CEO, Velma Merchant. Many can attest to her professionalism and customer service. Diamond Real Estate Management and Kits. Call 663-7326 or visit their office at 15 Shadwell Industrial Estate. Making your real estate dreams come true. 
When visiting St. Martin, you want clean, affordable accommodations. You need Midtown Motel in the heart of Phillipsburg, a place where you can relax, take a stroll on Great Bay Beach, and that provides you easy access to great shopping. Midtown Motel, located on Front Street, Phillipsburg, St. Martin. Call Midtown Motel at 721-542-0614 and book your stay today. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports. All from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. Nestled between evergreen mountains and the Caribbean Sea on the island of St. Kitts is the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center. With breathtaking views, a rugged, beautiful shoreline, and immaculate manicured gardens make this the perfect location for your holiday, event, or wedding. With a large convention center, apartments with balconies providing stunning views, and a secluded cottage for larger family groups or honeymooning couples looking for some privacy. We have something for everyone. Book your stay at www.millhouseskn.com or visit our Facebook page, the Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center, an oasis of tranquility. St. Kitts and Nevis Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Elvin Bailey, announced nomination sites for the 5th August general elections, listing sites for the required nominations of political candidates on 26 July 2022. Making a national address on ZLZ Radio and Television, Mr. Bailey said returning officers for each of the 11 constituencies in the Federation have already been appointed and will be present at nomination stations. The supervisor listed the stations that will be used on nominations day. Nominations for duly qualified candidates to contest this election will take place at the following places between the hours of 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., and 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., and will each be attended by its returning officer. The nomination sites are Constituency 1, Police Training School, Constituency 2, McKnight Community Center, Constituency 3, St. Johnson's Community Center, Constituency 4, Old Road Community Center, Constituency 5, Sandy Point Community Center, Constituency 6, Diet Bay Police Station, Constituency 7, Tabernacle Police Station, Constituency 8, St. Peter's Community Center, Constituency 9, Magistrates, Coach Charlestown, Constituency 10, David Freeman Center of Excellence, Gingerland, Constituency 11, Newcastle Police Station. Candidates must be nominated by at least two registered voters of the constituency in which the candidate seeks election, subject to the conditions set out in Section 62 of Part 4 of the Act. In due course, an announcement will be made of the names of the candidates who have been nominated. The register of voters for the upcoming elections will be provided soon, Bailey said, and indicated that some changes have been made to polling stations. The register of voters for this election will be provided shortly, and I will provide the breakdown in due course. Be advised that some adjustments have had to be made to some of the polling stations. The sites of these stations will be made available soon and will be posted in the districts, in the newspaper, and online at www.legal.gov.kn. Please pay attention to ensure that you know where your polling station is. The information will also be displayed in the public domain and at the electoral offices in Charlestown and in Basti. Polls will be open at 7 a.m. and close at 6 p.m. Any and all persons in line at the precinct of the polling station at 6 p.m. will be allowed to vote. 
anyone who comes in line after 6 p.m. will not be allowed to vote. Persons whose national identification cards have expired, persons who have misplaced or lost cards, persons whose cards are being held by others, once they are properly registered, will still be able to vote upon presentation of any other form of government-issued picture identification. These can be a passport, driver's license, or social security card. Other documents may be accepted, but the person will be required to take an oath. The presiding officers and agents of the candidates will also be equipped with picture lists to aid in identification of voters. Bailey said presiding officers will receive all election materials, including ballot boxes, which will be displayed, inspected, and secured before ballots are cast. Glenn Barrett reporting for SK Newsline. Farmers have expressed their gratitude towards the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Marine Resources after recently receiving 1,000-gallon water tanks to ease the challenges caused by water shortages. During the media unit's recent farm visits, three farmers expressed gratitude for the tanks and explained how the water storage tanks helped to boost food production during the dry season. Crop farmer Leon Yella Anthony of Stapleton, St. Peter's, expressed heartfelt gratitude while also providing a brief description of his setup. I want to give thanks to the Ministry of Agriculture to really helping me and providing me with 1,000 gallon tank so I could help increase on my crop production during the hot season. As you can see, I just installed my tank by getting an inch and a half coupling put it into the tank, come out with an inch and a half pipe, break it down to a three quarter, and then go right down to the three quarter submain in which will feed all of the plants them. So that is a plus for me during the hot season. So I have to give thanks. Livestock farmers, Audrine and Kervin Bradshaw were also recipients of a tank, which they say has been a great help on their pig farm and mansion. We just want to say thanks to the Ministry of Agriculture for supplying us with the water tank. It's very grateful and useful and we're going to make great use of it for when the rain falls, the, rain, the water goes into the tank to supply the water for the animals because yes, sometimes we do have shortage of water and we don't know where to turn so I'm grateful for the tank. God bless you guys. Meanwhile, crop farmer and co-owner of Riches of the Earth Farm, Victoria Bapham Berkeley, said the tank distribution is timely to help farmers like her and her husband Sydney Berkeley as they rely heavily on water and food from their trees. We make most of our products from the trees that we have, that we grow from our fruit trees and from the leaves. So it's very important for us to have this water. So now that Sydney has connected the tank to the irrigation system, we now are able to water our trees so that it can get what it needs, right? So we're very, very grateful for that. Uh, this tank, Sydney has been talking about wanting one for a long time. So to get one is something really that we're very grateful to the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. The corrosion resistant tanks can store a total of 3,785 liters and are ideal for rainwater harvesting and low maintenance water storage. Phase 2 of the distribution process is set to begin shortly and will see the allocation of water tanks to dozens of farmers in high priority communities like Kayon. August 5th is election day and SK Newsline, your number one news source in St. Kitts and Nevis, has all the news, action and information on Election Watch, a webpage dedicated totally to all things election. Log on to www.sknewsline.com, click on Election Watch and stay tuned to all things elections, including live public meetings from the various political parties. All this leading up to the August 5th poll. Election Watch on SKN Newsline, your trusted news source for election 2022. If you're looking for a place to host that special event, conference, meeting, social event, party, whatever the occasion, your best option is the Millhouse Convention Center in Palmetto Point, St. Kitts. Located on the picturesque Garvey's Estate, the Millhouse Guest House Convention Center has enough space for outdoor events overlooking the Caribbean Sea. 
If you're looking indoors, the center is equipped with amenities needed to make your event a success. And by combining both spaces, you're sure to have a memorable event, no matter the occasion. Call the offices at Millhouse Guest House and Convention Center to book your next event on simply the most beautiful place in St. Kitts. Call 668-1392. Millhouse Convention Center at Garvey's Estate, Palmetto Point, St. Kitts. Making your event memorable. It's the new and improved SK Newsline Android mobile app. With the SK Newsline app, you can watch your news reports, the SK Newsline newscast, sports, special features, and so much more. You can also send us a WhatsApp or call us directly. Go in the Google Play Store, search SK Newsline, and download the app today. The SK Newsline mobile app. News on the go. An open interactive event can be described as Tremendous, effective On power with any conference around the world From exhibitions to trade shows Corporate events to product launches From press events to political functions We are the secret sauce behind events that make you go Wow We've staged multiple world-class events in the Caribbean and develop the skill to deliver quality in every detail, whether the event is live or fully virtual, or maybe even somewhere in between. At Open Interactive, we got your events covered. Get your free quotation today at www.madebyopen.com. travel between mainland Grenada and Karekou and by extension P.T. Martinique will improve from August 1st as a newly elected cabinet on Monday has decided to continue with the agreement made between SVG Air and the previous administration providing regular flights to the sister isle. In early June, following the signing of an air service contract with SVG, the then Tourism Minister, Dr. Clarice Modis Cohen, announced that the NNP administration has come to an agreement through SGV Air's managing director. Prime Minister Dickon Mitchell says the lack of flights between the islands has been a great concern for residents of Karikou, and as such, it was necessary to address it. The expected uh, days on which flights will occur is five days per week, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, so we really are pleased to, to announce that we are proceeding with this. We think certainly it will help uh, our citizens in Karakou, it will help economic activity uh, between Grenada and Karakou, and critically as well, um, for some of the basic services that are needed, such as persons who are ill, uh, who need medical services in Grenada, uh, this obviously is required in, in order to ensure that they can travel uh, relatively effectively between Karakou and, and Grenada. So that should commence on the 1st of August. It in effect means that the government is subsidizing uh, the cost of the, the travel. That is part of the reason why the agreement had to take place between uh, the government and the airlines. The flights will provide services from St. Vincent, Caricou and Grenada. Some terms and conditions for the SVG operation involved a twin utter and a 19-seater plane to provide better air service. Prime Minister Mitchell also announced the start of the agreement between British Airways and Grenada for the winter season. Uh, last Monday, Cabinet also gave the green light uh, for the Board of Tourism to uh, proceed with negotiations with British Airways to ensure uh, that uh, air service between Grenada and the UK uh, continues past December 31st, 2022. The current agreement expires on the 31st of December 2022. That agreement provides for two flights per week to Grenada. Uh, the new agreement that is being negotiated, we're hoping to up the flights to three. Uh, we think our stakeholders in the tourism industry, particularly our hoteliers, as well as Grenadians in the UK diaspora in particular, I think will be happy um, if we can in fact uh, come to terms with the British Airways. So we are hoping that we can negotiate this agreement and conclude it uh, uh, swiftly so that come the winter season for 2023, uh, that airlift between Grenada and the UK market is secured. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet-Thomas reporting.
With Parliament slated to reconvene on Thursday, suspension looms for eight sitting members from the APN UFC's camp, including Annette Ferguson, Chief Whip, Christopher Jones, and Sherrod Duncan, who were allegedly part of the maze grabbing chaos during a debate on the Natural Resource Fund bill on December 29, 2021, following a recommendation by the Parliamentary Committee of Privileges. But the opposition sprung into action on Wednesday to defend its counterparts by filing an action at the High Court against the the alleged illegalities committed by the committee. The leader of the opposition, Aubrey Norton, has called the recommendation by the committee an attempt to silence the members of parliament, even though they were fighting for the right of Guyanese people, while the government was determined to force a contentious bill on the nation. Unconstitutional because our constitution, the supreme law of our land, enshrines the right of all citizens to natural justice. That is the right of every Guyanese, regardless of the charges, to be given an opportunity to be heard by a competent, independent, and impartial court or any other tribunal prescribed by law. Moreover, he advanced that the suggestion is unparliamentary because the records of Parliament show that all members of Parliament in the past who were referred to the Committee of Privileges were always afforded the opportunity to be represented by legal counsel of their choice and were given the opportunity to be heard. Shadow Attorney General Royce Dilford said that the suit takes into consideration a consistent trend by the government to deny the opposing members of Parliament the opportunity to be heard. It is elementary and it is fundamental that in that committee it will be so disappointing and it is a disappointment that the Attorney General who is a member of that committee and who would have known better and even after he would have been reminded of the arguments and the adoption of those arguments by the Privileges Committee callously and wantonly simply said that was then, this is now. The committee's report recommended that Christopher Jones, Ganesh Mahi Paul, Sherrod Duncan, and Natasha Singh Lewis be suspended for four consecutive sittings of the National Assembly after they allegedly engaged in disorderly and disrespectful behavior. Further, it proposed to Bitha Sarbu Hali, Marine Philadelphia, be granted a six week suspension. Echoing the sentiments of Norton, was leader of the Alliance for Change, Kamrad Ramjatan, who said that the move is an act of political discrimination. This is what you call um, a retrograde steps. This is what we call um, getting back into authoritarianism. This is not the rule of law. And we have some fundamental um, uh, problems and challenges now are confronting us. We have to take this to court. We also have to do other things. And we have to also carry it on the ground out there. Norton lodged a motion for an impartial investigation into the alleged corrupt practices involving Vice President Bharat Jagdew, as revealed in the Vice News recording. In 2021, the opposition APNUFC had strongly opposed an amendment by the government of the Natural Resource Fund Bill, citing that more consultations are needed. They were pushing for the bill to be sent to a parliamentary select committee for further examination, but those on the government side maintained that was not necessary. During the final leg of the debate on the bill on December 29th, 2021, a commotion erupted in the National Assembly, which resulted in Shadow Minister of Housing Annette Ferguson, aided by other members from the opposition bench, grabbing the maze, a significant symbol for the passage of bills. Tamika Rodner reporting for the HGP Nightly News. <music> Welcome to the News Hour. We begin with breaking news coming out of the United States, where the US President Joe Biden has tested positive for the coronavirus. His symptoms are said to be mild. It's the first time the 79 year old has tested positive for the illness. Let's get the very latest on this from our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett, who joins me live now. Uh, Kimberly, a very simple statement from the White House confirming the condition and the vaccinations that the president has had. That's all we've got so far. Yeah, that's right. Uh, just getting the news in the last few moments via a statement giving a bit more clarification from the president's physician. We understand 
The president right now experiencing very uh, mild symptoms of COVID-19. We understand it is a runny nose, fatigue, and a dry cough. Now, uh, there have been some questions about the president and his whereabouts since he returned from his Middle East tour. It was a grueling multi-day tour of not just Israel, but also Saudi Arabia. Uh, of course, the president is advanced in age, and it was a very hectic schedule. And so, uh, many people, when they travel, will take some thank time you, off. You, you, uh, that certainly was the case with the president. He was uh, only making a few appearances, and that God did raise some questions well, with God reporters. The White House assuring reporters that the president was okay. He did make an appearance uh, where he talked about climate change in Massachusetts about 24 hours ago, uh, really causing no alarm. But then it was today when the president was set to travel again that we suddenly got the notice that the president would instead not be traveling, but instead would be remaining at the White House due to experiencing these mild symptoms of COVID-19. Now, we should point out that the president is double vaxxed, as it's called. In other words, he's had two courses of the COVID-19 vaccine, as well as he has been boosted on at least two occasions, most recently as of March 30th. Now, you will recall that Donald uh, Trump, the previous president, is uh, also a president who has come down with COVID-19. He did, in fact, experience more severe symptoms that ultimately caused him to have to leave the White House and go to Walter Reed Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. That is about 20 minutes drive north of here. Uh, that is not the case right now for Joe Biden. Right now, the White House saying that this is a situation that can be handled with the president's physicians here at mm. the White House at this time. And we understand there will be a further update from the White House at a White House press briefing that will be coming up in the coming hours. Of course, uh, when these sorts of situations occur, certainly with the U.S. President Kimberly, what's the protocol in terms of informing the vice president or the speaker of the House? They, they have to be informed, I presume. Of course, they would have to be informed. That is correct. But uh, right now, we have not been notified in any way that the president is unable to carry out his duties. So at this point, we are under the impression that Joe Biden is still very much in control of the White House and is still fully able to execute his duties as president. Uh, in no way has his duty been transferred to Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States. Uh, so at this time, we are fully under the impression that this is nothing more than uh, someone who might be experiencing a common cold, something that Joe Biden has experienced as president before, and therefore is still fully in uh, control and capable of carrying out his duties as president of the United States. Kimberly Hall, good, uh, I should point oh. out one more thing. We have that. Uh, my apologies. Uh, we have heard from the first lady, Dr. Jill Biden. I forgot to mention she has been uh, traveling. She has tested negative for COVID-19. She is resuming her full schedule, or rather, she never interrupted her schedule. She is in the northern state of Michigan. She is meeting with school children, we understand. She has no intention of changing her schedule. In fact, we understand she is going to go to the state of Georgia following her stop in Michigan. In other words, uh, she is feeling fine, has tested negative, and will continue to resume her duties as First Lady. Indeed. We'll come back to you, of course, uh, Kimberly, uh, with further updates through the day. For the moment, Kimberly Halkett there in Washington, D.C. St. Peter's FC defeated Flo 4 GK and Rockets in Eskin FA Premier League action at the Warner Park on Wednesday. Scoring for St. Peter's Lyndon David in the 11th minute before Raheem Davis of Keon equalised in the 15th minute. Salas Kalanier, however, made sure St. Peter's took a 2-1 lead into half-time, scoring in the 43rd minute. That was enough to give them the victory over Keon. In the second match of the doubleheader of that night, MSCR United Old Road Jets drew 1-1 with Rams Village Superstars. 
The game was very tense for most of the match. Jardel Isaac got the lead for Old Road once again in the 22nd minute. However, in the dying moments of the game, a foul was committed in the penalty box, giving Kimari Rogers a chance to equalize, which he did in the 90th minute. A red card was issued to Old Road's goal scorer, Jardel Isaac, in the 87th minute for using abusive and offensive language towards a match official. The SNFA Premier League continues this Friday at 6 p.m. Welcome to the SKN Newsline Weather Report. I am Janil Bull. Here is a look at the forecast for St. Kitts and Nevis. detailed weather report visit our website at www.sknnewsline.com